Hi guys, I'm Danny, and I started the Sunday Gym because I've noticed lately that people tend to go to colleges and universities without actually knowing why they're there. Afterwards, starting jobs are unfulfilling, so I'm interviewing different professionals to see what they have to say and to share their experience and knowledge with you. I hope you enjoy it. Right on. Hey, CJ, how are you doing? Good. Glad to hear. The podcast will be focused on three main questions. What do you do for a living? How did you get there? How did you know that this was the way to go? So, tell us sure. what you do for a living. Right. Uh, I do training. I do some coaching. Uh, I'm also working uh, at times consulting uh, for companies. The areas that I focus on are how companies uh, develop their leadership for the managers so that they can get the best results from the people. The other part I do is also to de develop the selling skills of the salespeople in a company so that you know, they bring in more uh, sales and profits for the company. Right on. It goes without saying that you really have to be a people's person to do something like that, right? Uh, yes, I hope so. Yes. Quite awesome. And... Uh... How did you how did you get there? Were you walking on the street one day years ago and you were <laughs> let me be a trainer? Is that what happened, or, or there's more to this? Right, and uh, well, it works in different jobs, and a um, couple of jobs I was part of the training department. So uh, when I when I first started my career, I was working with the Singapore government uh, as a internal training institute. So I was there, I was doing training in soft skills for. Um, certain parts of the public service in uh, the Singapore government. And then I left and, and I became, uh, uh, became a salesperson. And a number of years after that, I relocated to China. And I joined this company uh, again as the, the sales training manager for uh, the, the greater China uh, sales team. So uh, yeah, so in, in a way I have, I cut my teeth uh, in training uh, internally and also uh, because I have uh, the uh, the sales experience, and also becoming uh, becoming um, regional sales manager in different jobs that I had, so so the two kind of uh, converged together. And uh, in my last last uh, real job, and uh, that was in Shanghai, um, our company had a merger with uh, two other companies. So there is a lot of. Uh, what I call excess people. Uh, my job overlap with two other guys. So uh, out of the three guys, two have to go. So I was one of the guys that have to to, to have to leave, and um, it coincided with uh, the birth of my first child. So that was like 15 years ago, and uh, they they offered me a very nice package, and I thought. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good break to look after you know, the, my firstborn, which everybody in the whole family is very looking forward to. Uh, and, then, and then I got time and money to, to, do, to, to do all that. So with, with the spare time that I had, I kind of uh, sent out flyers, uh, sent out feelers rather, um, to, to talk to people you know, if, if they are looking for sales training. And, and uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's almost like a side hustle while I was kind of retrenched and trying to be a new dad at that point of time. And uh, I got I got paid enough and uh, uh, it, it, it kind of worked. So, so uh, uh, to, to start the ball rolling, I, I went full time instead of looking for the next job. Uh, that was I went um, uh, straight into being a trainer uh, and then doing some consulting work. And then I got certified as a coach. Uh, and then and, uh, the coaching to, to, to people as well. So that's that's how it all started. Your story sure is remarkable. You are well traveled. You do have a lot of experience. <laughs> and before I move to the third question, I didn't know about the the child thing. And this is a, an additional consider this an additional question, <laughs> strictly from me to you, because I really want to know how does one balance a career and family at the same time. Normally, I don't ask that question because <laughs> I don't have it, but this is very interesting and it's more more like you, you've seen the situation today. Good, People did. are a little bit worried and they have the right to. And when I really think about it, mm -hmm. it's not that the previous generation had less problems. To yeah. be honest, they had more. Yeah. Because we've never lived in such an open world. Mm -hmm. Right now, a guy from Bulgaria is talking to someone in Singapore. <laughs> right? so the world is open, the opportunities are endless. Yet, 
people are still worried and they in a matter they do have the right to be worried and to think yeah. about the balancing between a job and a child so if you can just share a few tips and tricks here sure. on this one. I, I, I think I'm lucky in the sense that um, being in my own business although the hours are irregular that there is a level of flexibility so if I'm not doing training uh, my, my time is mine to uh, to fix I can decide when I want to start work I work mostly from home way before uh, COVID, way before oh. working from home was, was a thing. So um, uh, there, there is a lot of flexibility in, in, in my work. Granted that if I'm traveling, if, if I have uh, training days and I need to get out uh, early, so those are, those are days that I couldn't be with my family. But uh, on, on my off days, and uh, in a training business, you don't really train every single day. So usually um, for training days, it shouldn't be more than three days a week, right? So, so sometimes, <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty good. That, that really does give you that that that's time frame. Really, yeah. that be so sometimes yeah, I do get four days a week with with kind of a Monday, Tuesday break a day and Thursday, Friday. But those are rare, and and there are weeks um, in between that there are no training at all. So um, yeah, so so there's there's a lot of uh, flexibility in that. So it allows me to take care of family. So I learned to change diapers when my my son was was little. little um, to to make um, you know, formulation milk uh, and and all that, um, and. If, if I were to go into, you know, uh, just the last two years, uh, um, in, in China we were very pampered, we have a helper, we, we have a part-time helper that, that takes care of our meals, oh. so we're very pampered, you know, uh, labor costs in, in, in China is not that high, so, so we've got a part-time helper who comes and fixes dinner for us, so, so we're, we're, we're kind of happy and uh, pampered. And, and then um, during COVID, uh, we came back to Singapore. Um, and uh, I was, well, we were now uh, bunking with my parents' house because our house in Singapore is, was, was rented out. Um, and um, in, in Singapore, we, were, we also had a lockdown. Uh, Part-time helpers could not go to, could not come over anyway, if, even if, if we want to. So um, I started to learn to cook. Uh, because of the lockdown, so and there was no, no business anyway, uh, so uh, there's less business anyway, so in order to kill time and, and also trying to uh, be with the family, I learned to cook and now I'm, I'm uh, cooking most of the meals uh, whenever I can for, for the family. So I, I think it's it's about uh, really having the, the heart uh, for, for the family. Um, finding ways you know, how one can contribute. Um, I understand that some people are really, really busy and there's really little time for the family. Uh, absolutely. But then, yeah, absolutely. But then again, there, there, there will always be rest days. There will always be breaks in between. And, and for me, it's, it's uh, for, for me to spend that quality time with the family and, and uh, see what, what else I can help out in the house. And also to, to that, that, everybody has got their strengths and weaknesses. So my, my weakness will be I'm, I'm really hopeless in trying to tutor my kids in the studies uh, for, some, for some reason, uh, whatever I say. I'm a trainer for all my life, but uh, with kids to, tutoring with their studies, uh, I'm horrible. Right? My wife is a lot better. Right? And, uh, but but I'm, I'm better in terms of waking early in the morning if I'm not working, well, if, if, if I'm not traveling, rather. Waking early in the morning to fix breakfast for them and then uh, when they come back to fix dinner for them and uh, kind of helping out with the chores. So, so, so um, I guess to the question of how to, uh, how to have that balance, it's also the thing about, you know, um, what, what, what what, what else would you like to contribute? I mean, uh, what, 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 although those are housework, uh, yeah. it can be tiring, but uh, what, what's I don't just... even I don't even calculate the housework because I personally have a washing machine, a dryer, and a robot that does it for me. So I kind of have to dust here and there once in a couple of months. So yeah. this is not, not even something I'm just... Yeah. That, that, that's out of the window. Uh, but my question was mostly because... And your response, uh, your response was perfect because... You know, kids need attention. Uh, yes. Like it, don't like it, it doesn't matter. They're just yeah. children need attention, and, and they earn for it. So uh, this is what has been troubling me a little bit. Not that I have children, but they, 
Um, besides fixing dinner, um, the, the one thing that I do best is also to, uh, the fun part. So if, if they need to go to the amusement park, they need to go to the water park, and you know, just bring them on, on an excursion. Um, yeah, so, so the, that is my, my uh, strength in a way. So, so if we are ever going on a holiday, we're, we're going somewhere, usually I'm in charge of uh, the entire planning and then bring, bring family for a good time. So, so again, it, it, it's, all, it's also, um, everyone has got his strengths and weaknesses, and, and uh, with, with family, it's about, uh, how, uh, is there a way to play to your strengths? Couldn't agree more. I love when you mentioned that uh, you've learned how to cook, and cl- uh, how to cook during COVID. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of, pe- you can see that the differences, there are a lot of people, me included, that learn additional skills during COVID because basically you're locked down, what are you going to do? <laughs> so there are those people that actually took that, took that as an opportunity. They yes. embraced it. Yes. Yeah, things weren't fine, but they could have been a lot worse. They yeah. took that, they learned from it, and they come out of that with, with a new skill, which is great. Yes. And there are those people who kind of lock themselves within themselves, which is yes. a little bit off, but I hope this will pass. Yeah, and that was so great when you when you said that. I really felt my heart was is with you. <laughs> and uh, to the last question, how did you knew that this was the way to go? And the reason I'm asking is that um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you have this issue in Singapore and in China, but it sure is an issue in uh, Europe and uh, and the United States. Right. Uh, people tend to go to colleges and universities. They don't really know why they're there. This this is the stigma mm-hmm. that you have to go over there to have a diploma. They have your future secured, which is ridiculous. Right. <laughs> but they really have to. They, they are going there, and afterwards they they, they were well. Not, I don't, I don't want to use the word force, but they kind of have to go and work yeah. on something that's not for them. They basically live in hell and being their own inquisitor, for lack of a better word. And uh, this is what the whole reason why I'm doing this podcast and this program. And I'm not against universities or colleges. To don't sure. get me wrong. Sure. I myself graduated, and it, it was the time of my life. It was perfect. Sure. perfect. But I always knew what I wanted to do, and I always felt it right. So it didn't. It didn't really cost me any energy. It was just yeah. right for me. But yeah. I can't say the same about the others. I don't know if you have that problem back home, uh, uh-huh. but there is this problem here because if you think about it, you lose between four and six years of, of a young person's life afterwards mm-hmm. they, they to to a working place without really ethics or, or knowledge. And not to mention mm-hmm. the universities are a mess these days. Right. So uh, this is why I'm asking the question in that way. How did you knew that this was the way to go? Because you obviously do. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been doing it for so long. <laughs> yeah. The way you're describing your job process and how you're doing it, I can basically see you putting a pair of old gloves. They, they just fit in perfectly. So this oh, is why I wanted to ask you, how did you knew that this was the way to go? I don't. I don't. Actually, I don't know. Uh, I, I was, like I said, I was, I was retrenched from a job. I was waiting for my, my kid, to, my eldest son to be born. And uh, I do have experiences doing what I'm doing, kind of. Uh, on and off, I, even when I was working, on and off, I got invited to give talks, or to do bits of uh, trainings here and there. So I kind of know a bit about our business. But um, well, I, I don't really know if that was the way. If, if it's not for the retrenchment, um, I would never know. Maybe I would uh, stick on a career all my life uh, without without coming out. So so it's 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 really hard to say. And to that point, there are a lot of people who try to be a freelance trainer or try to, to set up a training business or a consultant, and uh, they tried for a year or two and then they went back to corporate. Um, Primarily because uh, it pays better in the corporate. You get your annual leave, you get your benefits, um, and, and as, as an entrepreneur, you get nothing. So uh, for, for me, it's like I, I'm fully aware that I monetarily, materially, I might be getting more if I went back to corporate, but um, I, I may miss out on my freedom and uh, my yeah. time to, to work with, uh, to be my family. So it's a, it's a, there's a bit of trade-off here and there. So so uh, I'm kind of attracted more to the freedom um, than, uh, I guess, the money <laughs> in, in corporate. You know, if, if someone would say, you know, uh, I'll give you more money and uh, I'll take away some of the freedom, I would say no. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's, that's 
probably the thing. Now, back to uh, your question about, you know, kids being, being forced to um, uh, take up college and then going to work. Um, when I was 18, I, I don't think I knew what I want to do uh, when I no, when I graduate, I I studied management because it's like, yeah, because after you study management, you become manager, right? So, uh, like fresh out of school, so it, so it's a general concept, the management thing. It's a general concept, and from there, you you learn a lot of general stuff. So you yeah. you you kind of have some options presented to you, so that you can kind of pick up and go there. Yeah, and and the thing is that yeah, I I kind of did well in that, but. Was it really helpful with my career? No, <laughs> not really. Um, I, in, in hindsight, either I I, I study thing uh, I could have studied things like computer science, which is more useful and, and uh, yeah. in terms of getting a job, or if I if I go the other way and pursue my my real interests, uh, I could have studied history, which is really really my my interest, but um, will not lend me to any kind of job. But my management degree doesn't doesn't really help anyway, so so it didn't it didn't really really matter, um, yeah. So so it's 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 really hard for uh, for a person at eighteen years old, or twenty years old, to know what what they want to do for the rest of their lives. It's it's, it's really difficult. And with my sons and um, uh, my my wife uh, disagree to say that no, she's always one wanting them to study real hard, get good grades, and go into the best places possible. For me, it's like uh, well, if you can get into the best possible place, great. I'll be very happy if if my son goes to Harvard or Stanford. I hope not. <laughs> Different story. If they if they really go into some elite universities, well, I'll, I'll be very proud of them. I'll be very happy. But on the other spectrum, if let's say they they really are struggling in school and, and are not doing well, then I'll say that no, uh, it's it's okay for them to take the time. They can go for a vocational school. They can go and get a, a, what I call a, a trades diploma rather than a degree. Yeah. And, and and the good thing about Singapore is um, uh, there are many people that went through uh, a wide variety of roads. To get a degree, right? If if the end point is a degree, I mean, of course, the degree is not the end point. But um, there are people who went through the usual way, like high school, junior college, and then degree. There are people who got a trade uh, diploma and got a degree. There are people who went to a vocational school and then a trade diploma and then a degree. There are people who went to prison, came out, and then uh, decided to turn a new leaf and and went and got a degree. And there are people, of course, who are studying a degree in a prison. So, and again, I'm not advocating the prison part, but uh, what I'm saying is is that. Um, there, there are many roads available, and um, some people are fortunate enough to say that there are no roadblocks, there are no detours, they just went on and on, get a degree, and if they went to something that they really like, fantastic, it's, it's, it's good for them. And, and some other people are not that fortunate. Uh, it takes a while to to get them to uh, get the hang in, in terms of studying, in terms of finding out what they really like, um, and and some people like my own sister-in-law. I mean, she she had a degree, she had an MBA, she was uh, working in commercial, she was working in government, and one one fine day she woke up saying that she's going to quit the uh, corporate world, and then she went now at the age of fifty into. A vocational school, learning baking. That's like 180. Yeah, yeah. She decided that she has a passion for baking, bakery. So, so she went to baker baking vocational school. So all her classmates are people about 18 years old. She is the only one person at 15. She's now serving a practicum, which is kind of an internship with a five-star hotel in Singapore. In order to help her with her baking skills, uh, my brother and her actually got a full set of um, oven in the house just so that she can practice her homework, so to speak. Wow. Ask your sister in law if she wants to join the podcast sometime. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's something solid.
Yeah, yeah. I mean, she just got sick and tired of a copper ball, and at, at 50, it's like uh, she, she finds it enough. Enough. My brother is a breadwinner of of the of the house. They got no kids. They're like, uh, so um, if they don't need the money, uh, yeah, and no kids to feed. What are we sounds, doing? Sounds amazing. <laughs> sounds uh, just look at it. Spending like. 20, 30 years in corporate world, yeah. and at some point, like, you know what, no, I'm going to open a bakery or something. Yeah. That's a little bit like, from, from you know, those uh, old, uh, not old, but, you know, movies from the 90s, the, the beginning of 90s, and sick yeah. and tired of corporate and going and be a musician, a baker or something. That sounds like that one. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. I mean, the good thing about them, about, about my sister-in-law, is that um, they, they had a very strong financial uh, Backing, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, she doesn't have to work if she really, really doesn't want to. But then again, what are you, what are you going to do with your time if, if you're not working, right? If she's not if she's not working, so uh, she just decided to pursue her, her passion. That's that's remarkable. The the thing about the the last question, how did you knew this was the way to go? I I really structured it in this way because so far I haven't had. Uh, a same reply from two people and I'm not only asking it on the program I'm doing it in general so that's what I love about this question uh, if you have any final advice for the people who are either looking for a job stepping now on the uh, workplace what will it be well um, I, I, I would use uh, the um, Steve Jobs advice with a little bit of moderation so Steve Jobs says, follow your heart, follow your passion. If you haven't found it, keep finding. And uh, in a way, it's that way. But at the same time, be bear in mind that you probably will need to earn a living, right? Yep. So um, but there, there are realities in life. So um, um, you know, if, if, if you are doing enough to pay the bills, to make a living, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and along the way if you found something that you really really like to do and you want to venture in that well then then have a balance to see that you know, how much of the commitment are you going to put into it to really put in the to, to go into that that passion of yours and um if if it makes um, financial sense if it's going to have a balance to say that you're able to take care of yourself your family and pursue a passion go for it or no, um, or even if you know, there are people who, who started business and fail or went to some, some kind of a work they thought they liked but they eventually don't like it, um, it's, it's okay to have a U-turn. There's, there's no shame in saying that I tried something, it didn't work out, and therefore I'm a failure. That's just, there's nothing of that. I tried something, it failed, fine. Uh, oh, I'll it's go back a to my normal life. life. It's basically the equivalent yeah, of being a baby and not being able to run yeah. for the first day. You kind of have to crawl, you fall a little bit. It's part of life. That's something yeah, you know, couldn't have said it better. It's so to be ashamed of it. And, and, and at the very least, um, you can tell yourself you, you, there is no regret. You tried. It didn't work out. You may want to try again. You may not want to try again. That, that, that's entirely up to you. So so that's 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 the thing. And um, there are people like my sister-in-law, I mean, uh, there are people who never knew exactly what they want until they are really like 40, 50, 60 years old. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, why, why have that burden of trying to find out what you really want to do at the age of 18? And after all, with all these changes in our economy and environment and everything, um, new jobs will be invented 5, 10, 15, yeah, yeah. 20 years later. You never know. Um, Absolutely. I remember my father, <clears throat> I think he's around 70 or something like that now. I remember he was telling me when he was young, his father told him to learn how to fix television, uh, 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 how to fix TV, right? Yeah. yeah. So because uh, if you know how to fix those, you always have a job, yeah. right? I personally have never fixed a TV. I, I never had that need. I, I'm buying a TV. It works for about five, seven, ten years. Then I'm throwing it out and I'm buying a new one. I don't even know if they're fixing it these days. <laughs> so definitely, you never know. This is my personal philosophy. Yeah. I never look into the future for two main reasons. First of all, I can't because I don't know how to. 
And second of all, it's pointless. You never know. So <laughs> I'm always based on the current moment. I'm not, and I don't look. I don't look back. Even for it. the it's pandemic, like, in in my business, before before the pandemic. Uh, 90% of our work is going to be face to face. Nobody is saying, let's do a Zoom training. I mean, uh, we may have a Zoom meeting to discuss something or a Skype meeting, but no one in their right frame of mind will say, hey, let's do a training in, in, in Zoom. No one, never happens, right? Um, and even coaching, where it's one to one, and, and uh, most of my coaching these, these days, and I find it even better than face to face. Um, because coaching face to face is either I go to the office or we go to some cafe. If it's if it's cafe, it's too distracting. There are too many people moving here and there. If it's in an office, it's too like too formal. But if it's on Zoom, it's best, and we can always record and playback. It's it's better than face to face for coaching. So. If it's not for the pandemic, no one will think about, hey, there is a different way of working. Whether it's, it's my industry, whether it's, you know, we're having a podcast is, uh, right now, whether uh, if it's uh, people who say that, you know, I don't really need to work in an office. I can work in, if there's Wi-Fi on the beaches in Bali, if my laptop battery holds enough, who, who is stopping me from working from the beach? Right on. <laughs> right. So if I'm if I'm able to get things done and, and my boss is not breathing down my down my neck for for bad uh, deliveries, who's stopping me from from working anywhere on the planet? So so the the, the thing is that and, and there are now um, digital nomads that work anywhere, to the extent that countries like Malaysia, like Thailand, are giving long term work visas for digital nomads. Listen, go there, rent some place, you are, you're here, you can stay uh, like three years in one shot with an uh, option to renew for another three years. Uh, yeah, so, so make, make, make the country as your home, travel around country, contribute to the economy and work wherever you are. Same thing happens here, by the way, especially in those uh, winter, winter places when people tend to go for skiing and stuff like that. I personally yeah. was never really into this kind of sport, but... They actually tend to go over there, rent a place, stay there for the whole winter, like from October to March. <clears throat> so, yeah, definitely. We, we do live in, in the most interesting times ever. Yes. With that said, CJ, thank you for being here. Thank you for, thank you. for your time and everything. I really adore the stories. That was remarkable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. All right. Guys, I hope this one was useful. Please follow the channel on YouTube, Rumble, Gap, Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. Ring the bell and all the good stuff. Have a nice week ahead and I'll see you next Sunday.